Last time we stopped reading at Majima Nikaya 73, Maha Wacha Gota Sutta. Today, we are going to continue with seven kinds of noble persons. 11. Monks. I do not say of all monks that they still have work to do with diligence. Nor do I say of all monks that they have no more work to do with diligence. I do not say of those monks who are arahants, with pains destroyed, who have lived their spiritual life, done what had to be done, laid down the burden, reached their own goal, utterly destroyed the fetters of existence, and are completely liberated through final knowledge that they still have work to do with diligence. Why is that? They have done their work with diligence. They are no more capable of being negligent. negligent. Hmm. So the way we started off with Arahans. The Buddha mentioned Arahans yeah. Okay, yeah. this is the important point. I do not say, yeah, so the Buddha do not say the Arahans need still have work to do. Yeah. Why? Because they are already Arahans, they are already completely liberated. They can't be negligent anymore. Right? They can't be negligent in terms of breaking the precepts, for example, which we will take a look again in subsequent sutta later on. There will be nine things the Arahans cannot do. So this, is, this is what they meant by no more capable of being negligent. For example, let's say if we have built the habit of brushing our teeth every time we wake up, then this habit sticks with us for the rest of our life. We are not capable of being negligent, not, not capable of not brushing our teeth every time we wake up. Um, maybe occasionally we will miss a day or two. <laughs> uh, but this is just uh, one example. Sister Chai Kwan, would you like to continue? I say of those minds who are trainees, whose minds have not yet reached the goal, and who are still aspiring to the unsurpassed security from bondage, that they still have work to do with diligence. Why is that? Because when those venerable ones make use of suitable lodgings and associate with good friends and nurture their spiritual faculties, they may, by realizing it for themselves with direct knowledge in this present life, enter upon and dwell in that supreme goal of the spiritual life for the sake of which plantsmen right rightly go forth from the home of life into homelessness. Seeing this fruit of diligence for these monks, I say that they still have work to do with diligence. Monks, there are seven kinds of persons to be found existing in the world. What seven? They are one liberated in both ways. One liberated by wisdom, a body weakness, one attained to view, one liberated by faith, a Dharma follower, and a faith follower. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Sister Chai Kwan. Okay, so at number 12, we started off with Arahans. Then number 13 is the trainees. Who are the trainees? Everyone else other than the Arahants, whose minds have not yet reached the goal. 
not yet liberated. Then, if you're not liberated, of course, you still have work to do with diligence. Why is that? When these people make use of suitable logics associated with good friends, nurture their spiritual faculties, and then they may, by realizing it for themselves, attain the supreme goal of spiritual life. This is why, seeing this fruit for these monks, the Buddha says, they still have work to do with diligence. Now we are going to the seven kinds of the noble person. What are they? Okay. Very quickly, one liberated in both ways, one liberated by wisdom, a body witness, one attained to few, one liberated by faith, a Dharma follower, and a faith follower. What are these? Yeah, we will read to find out. Sister Shomi, would you like to continue? What kind of person is one liberated in both ways? Here, some person contacts with the body and dwells in those liberations that are peaceful and formless, transcending forms, and his chains are destroyed by seeing with wisdom. This kind of person is called one liberated in both ways. I do not say of such monk that he still has work to do with diligence. Why is that? He has gone, he has done his work with diligence. He's no more capable of being negligent. What kind of person is one liberated by wisdom? Here, some person does not contact with the body and dwell in those liberations that are peaceful and formless transcending forms, but his chains are destroyed by his seeing with wisdom. This kind of person is called one liberated by wisdom. I do not say of such a monk that he still has work to do with diligence. Why is that? He has done his work with diligence. He's no longer, he's no more capable of being negligent. Thanks, Sister Shomi. Take a look at the first two. One liberated in both ways. Okay, put notes number 13. Ubato Baga Vibhuta. P.S. He is liberated in both ways because he is liberated from the form body by the formless attainments and from the mental body by the path of arahanship. So this is why it's called both ways. The first way is the formless attainment. Second way is the arahanship, liberated from the body and from the mental. The next one, the one liberated by wisdom. So this noble disciples, they do not attain formless attainments. Take a look at footnotes 14. Panya Vimuta. P.S. The commentary says this includes those who attain any of the four jhanas, as well as the dry insight arahans. A dry insight aran is not explicitly recognized in the Nikayas. Sister Aikin, would you like to continue? What kind of person is a body witness? Here, some person contacts with the body and dwells in those liberations that are peaceful and formless, transcending forms. And some of his stains are destroyed by his seeing with wisdom. This kind of person is called a body witness. I say of such a monk that he still has work to do with the diligence. Why is that? Because when that venerable one makes use of suitable lodgings and associates with good friends and nurtures his spiritual faculties, he may, by realizing it for himself, with direct knowledge in his 
in this present life enter upon and dwell in the in that supreme goal of spiritual life for the sake of which cleansed men rightly go forth from the home life into homelessness. Seeing this fruit of diligence for such a monk, I say that he still has work to do with diligence. What kind of person is one attained to view? Here some person does not contact with the body and dwell in those deliberations that are peaceful and formless, transcending forms, but some of his stains are destroyed by his seeing with wisdom. And he has reviewed and examined with wisdom the teachings proclaimed by the Tathagata. This kind of person is called one attained to view. I say of such a monk that he still has work to do with diligence. Why is that? Because that because when that venerable one went into homelessness, seeing this fruit of negligence for such a monk, I say that he still has work to do with diligence. Thanks, Sister Akim. Who knows number 15, a body witness. Kayash Saki. This includes all those from persons on the path of Arahanship down to stream enterers who attain the formless attainments. Okay, that is the body witness. And footnotes number 16. One attain to few, Diti Pata. This includes the same classes who do not attain the formless attainments and in whom wisdom is the dominant faculty. So this is one attain to few. I'll continue with number 19. What kind of person is one liberated by faith? Here, some person does not contact with the body and dwell in those liberations that are peaceful and formless transcending forms, but some of his taints are destroyed by his saying with wisdom and his faith is planted, rooted, and established in the Tathagata. This kind of person is called one liberated by faith. I say of such a monk that he still has work to do with diligence. Why is that? Because when that venerable one into homelessness, seeing this fruit of diligence for such a monk, I say that he still has work to do with diligence. Putos number 17, Sada Vimuta. This includes the same classes in whom faith is the dominant faculty. It says the Chaikon, would you like to continue? What kind of person is a Dharma follower? Here, some person does not contact with the body and dwell in those liberations that are peaceful and formless, transcending forms, and his things are not yet destroyed by his seeing with wisdom. But those teachings proclaimed by the Tathagata are accepted after being pondered to a sufficient degree with wisdom. Furthermore, he had these qualities, the faith faculty, the energy faculty, the mindfulness faculty, the concentration faculty, and the wisdom faculty. This kind of person is called a Dharma follower. I say of such a monk that he still has work to do with diligence. Why is that? Because when that venerable one into homelessness, seeing this fruit of diligence for such a monk, I say that he still has work to do with diligence. Thanks, Sister Chaikwan. Putos number 18. Dharma Nusari. This time and the next Sada Nusari are the two kinds of persons practicing for realization of the fruit of stream entry. See page 375, text of the 10, section 2.2. This is the Dharma follower. And the last one, Sister Shomi, would you like to read? 
What kind of person is a faith follower? Here, some person does not contact with the body and dwell in those liberations <coughs> that are peaceful and formless, transcending forms. And his chains are not yet destroyed by his seeing with wisdom. Yet he has sufficient faith in and love for the Tathagata. Furthermore, he has these qualities, the faith faculty, the energy faculty, the mindfulness faculty, the concentration faculty, and the wisdom faculty. This kind of person is called a faith follower. I say of such a, man, a monk that he still has a work, he still has work to do with diligence. Why is that? Because when that venerable one makes use of suitable lodgings and associates with good friends and nurtures his spiritual faculties, he may, by realizing it for himself with direct knowledge in this present life, enter upon and dwell in the supreme goal of the spiritual life for the sake of which clansmen rightly go forth from the home life into homelessness. Seeing this fruit of diligence for such a monk, I say that he still has work to do with diligence. Manjimanikaya Kitagiri Sutta, section 1477 to 479. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Thanks, Sister Shomi. The last one is the faith follower, which is marked by sufficient faith in and love for the Tathagata. They also have this quality, faith faculty, energy, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom faculty. This person is called faith follower. With that, we have complete, we have finished reading this sutta. Tomorrow we will continue with the next section, stream entry. Any questions or comments for what we have read so far? If not, would Sister Chai Kwan like to do the dedication? Okay. Thanks, Sister Chai Kwan. Till we meet again, may we be guided by the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Have a faithful Monday ahead. Thanks, everyone. See you guys next time.